Hello there, folks. Good evening. It's Carl Smith from the UK Hypnosis Academy. It gives me great pleasure tonight to introduce to some of you that haven't met him before, Jason Lynette over from America. How are you, my friends? I'm doing all right. It's uh, nice and warm over here for some odd reason right now, but uh, good times. Oh, good, good. What we'll do is we'll wait for a couple of people to join us. I know there's, there's some people that are going to be hanging around, and uh, I presume with this that they can watch it later as well, can't they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Wonders of technology when it works. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> So what me and Jason are going to be talking about tonight is, is a pending visit to the UK. Uh, what Jason, uh, who Jason Lynette is, what Jason Lynette does, and also what you, you're going to get on the two days when he meets us uh, over in England. So we'll just wait for a couple of people to join us. We've got the merry band of one at the moment. They normally come crashing in. Um, they normally just all come crashing in on one go. But but no, apart from that, it's fairly warm over there then at the moment. Yeah, and uh, it's a nice uh, bit of a three-ring circus uh, for me here over at the moment. It's a day of seeing clients, uh, just spending time with you here. I got to guest uh, speak over at the uh, uh, Cheryl Larry Elman's training earlier today by way of uh, webcast here as well. Yes. So uh, nice to actually be in the room in the moment with people too, which is part of what we're doing coming up in June. Yeah. Well, do you know what the, the, the thing is that when uh, about two, three years ago, I run, I run a couple of classes and I got Larry and Cheryl, I got Larry and Cheryl to come on live. And um, God bless them, and I love them both very sincerely. It's just a case of it was it was interesting watching them both on, on camera for the first time, and it was an experience in itself. And I, I do love them to bits, and you know, and it's always great to have Larry and Cheryl on board anyway, because obviously, oh, yeah, the Elman name and that. But I know you're very staunch Elmanian uh, in in the way that you work as well, aren't you? Well, it's a it's a Elmanian Ericksonian approach or an Ericksonian Elmanian approach that. There's moments to be extremely direct and to be the mechanic and get in there and do the job and get the work done. Though um, the reason we're jumping on a few moments, a uh, uh, minute or two after the plan was I was wrapping up a session here where it became a point where there's a certain category of client that quite honestly, like 10 years ago, this frustrated the hell out of me yeah. where I just feel stuck. I just don't feel motivated. I don't know what I want. And 10 years ago or so, that would be the one that was just like, give me something to latch on to. And yet realizing we don't always have to have the answer. So building a moment where the hand was into a, a levitation and that right arm will only begin to lower down as this process now creates balance and harmony and, you know, satisfies whatever needs to happen. And quite honestly, for the next 20 minutes in that session, I'm just watching that arm just kind of ratchet down <laughs> on its own, um, which is about as indirect as you can get but you know just kind of bringing in that moment of letting the magic actually occur on its own rather than having to facilitate it and muscle your way through it at all times yeah i find that i think i think you you know for myself um i can most people see me as a very direct hypnotist um i am i am in 90 percent of what i do but there is that um there is that um Ericksonian element of me as well that comes out but i, I prefer the direct approach and i think that i attract people that want purely direct approaches. And I think, I think you are, you know, you know, you're, you've got a bit of both in you. Me, I'm just direct. A lot of people, um, you know, just want to fire, you know, just literally want me to muscle their way in. Good evening, Chris. I think as I've got uh, Chris Thompson in the room saying, uh, channel your, channel your inner Milton. I don't want to, I don't want to, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it kind of fits into the whole theme, though, that the uh, upcoming class, Work Smart Hypnosis Live in London that we're doing in uh, June, yeah. it's where the same things we've been talking about in terms of how to apply it to your session, where sometimes, this is part of my opinion, too, I, the, the statement that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, yeah. my statement is, I will agree with that phrase eventually. So that's not necessarily where it begins, because part of the reason you're reaching out to me as the hypnotist is that you see me as that person who can help you to facilitate this change. Yep. So you're giving me that role. You're giving me that title. So let me harness that expectation and put that to use. Now, once we have that change in motion, then comes the transition where now here's how you can do a lot of this on your own. Yep. So, yes, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis eventually. Yeah. It's the phrase that I'd live by, which that even applies over to how we run our businesses, that uh, the phrase I keep coming back to is that sometimes you just have to sell the thing. Yeah. So we can get extremely artful sometimes with designing funnels for those of you who know what that is in terms of let me create some sort of offer for you to come in and learn more about this and then guide you down some sort of pathway 
But then again, at times it just works to say, hey, here's this thing. It's this much money. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Because both of them work. You just got to balance that out and share both of them there. Yeah. <laughs> so, t so tell us, Jason, tell, so, so, obviously I know you. I've known you for many years now. It's a case of, and I've, I've come to watch you and you've been on my classes. I've sat in many of your classes in Vegas and uh, I watch a lot of your stuff. But for those people that are watching at this moment, who is Jason Lynette? And and what does Jason Lynette offer at this present moment in time globally? Because I know you work globally. You can tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, my, my background into this, I'll give you the shortest version possible, was uh, like many people, I saw a stage hypnosis show and I thought, oh, that's cool. And I didn't have a model to copy. So I was really learning a lot of things from books and videos, self-taught. So originally was a self-taught stage hypnotist, just kind of working on my own, yeah. which then found myself in a hypnotherapy training. Quite honestly, they're going to get the letters after my name so I could charge more for my show. I'm not going to do this therapy crap, and now it's all that I do. So yeah. to look at it, it's we're on one side of things. Where we start is not often where we end up. Yeah. And the other side of my story was that when I launched uh, my local business, I'm in Virginia, just outside of the Washington, D.C. area. I attended a local hypnosis meetup group and there was this odd experience where people were saying, oh, you shouldn't have quit your job in management that you left behind to do this uh, hypnosis thing. It's going to be slow your first year. Uh, yeah. People won't send referrals to a new hypnotist. That was my first introduction, which I know these people. It wasn't out of fear or scarcity. They were genuinely concerned for me. Yeah. The story goes, though, I'm back at the event the next month. And I had a fully packed schedule and I'm back at the event two or three months later to now be lecturing these people as to how I created that fully packed schedule. So a lot of what I've done, it's where the positioning of the hypnosis business guinea pig, uh, I will not teach things that I have not done myself. Okay. And the catchphrase nowadays is that on the business end of it, I see clients, I teach classes, I sell products online, I speak at most of the major conventions, and where some people are working towards building that first six-figure income, uh, I'm currently running three different six-figure hypnosis businesses, uh, seeing clients, teaching live events, as well as selling information online, yeah. which came about years ago that, uh, to say it politely, I started to uh, stop listening to other hypnotists as to what they were doing to grow their business and going elsewhere. The people who were selling in the millions, the people who were reaching a much bigger audience, what were they doing? Yeah. And those were the strategies that I began to finesse for myself to find out what works for our odd little community of hypnotists. Yeah. And that's what I now teach. So strategies to add more value to your process, which Surprisingly, the, the same mindset towards growing the business is what also then eventually applied over to how I work with my clients to streamline that process, get direct, get to the point, and create that, as I like to say, most effective process and the most efficient use of the client's time. Uh, the better business model is that of raving fans rather than lifelong dependents. So yeah. um, many people out there I'm looking through who's uh, watching us now, um, I, I do the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast which is an ongoing uh, training resource that goes out for free every Thursday on yeah. iTunes, on podcast players, on worksmarthypnosis.com. Uh, the session coming out uh, next week, actually, no, tomorrow, is all about outsourcing strategies to grow your business that uh, I don't do a lot of what I do. Is the no, nice way to ringmaster calling the cues. <laughs> And I think it's, uh, we, I was talking, uh, I see Bev's on there today. We were talking about this today about outsourcing utilizing your time and spending all the time that you need on what you're good at but getting other people that are good at what they're doing to do your work for you because it you know it just cuts down time it's cost effective as well and well just because you can doesn't mean you should uh, i know how to do video design i can kind of you know uh muster my way through some website strategies and uh, sound editing, but the time that I can then hand that off to somebody else, which this doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be complicated, yeah. you know, those are the things that now allow me to then spend my time chatting to lovely individuals like you, spending time in session with my clients. I've got a family at home. My daughter is six, my son is four, and uh, spend that time with them. And Michael is watching us right now, and he just said leverage. Which, yeah, Michael must have uh, listened to me before because that's the whole theme of all that I do of how do you leverage the next step moving forward, which 
again, it's where this class coming up, it's Saturday and Sunday, June 9th and 10th. It's one part hypnotic strategy. It's one part business. Because look at it this way. A client is coming into the process and let's use a simple example. They want to overcome a fear of public speaking. I don't want the process just to be focused on removing that fear, removing that anxiety. What if we're also leveraging that change into them becoming that confident speaker? Let's let's turn this thing into a strength. Yeah. And the same mechanisms back to the business as well in terms of how do I take each and every testimonial and now build that to the next moment? How do I take this client's success and leverage that appropriately into more referrals? So we're adding more value to the client experience while also receiving more value back along the way. So what, you, what do you intend to do over the two days? I mean, you just mentioned about just the, the, what you're going to do, but break it down into small into into parts for us so we can understand what you're going to do. I mean, I've, I've watched you many times, Jason, and I've listened to your podcast. I've even featured on your podcast, so I know what it's all about. But for those people out there, what are we actually, what are you going to go through the processes? Because I know a lot of people always ask me, what are we actually going to cover? What are we going to do? I'll give you a bigger picture theme first of all. It's very rarely the platform. It's almost always the strategy. So I would run into people who would say, yeah, does Facebook marketing work? Hey, here's a local health fair. Should I, should I uh, get a table at that event? Or should I run an ad in this local magazine? Should I write for this local paper? And should I pay for ads to point to my website? Should I put videos on my site? People are stuck in the, uh, in the category at times of what are those individual things that I should be doing? That's not where the focus ought to be. Where the focus needs to be in terms of what is that client journey? What is that experience that they're going to be going through? How do we switch over to most people, just to give you some business lingo here, most people are operating their hypnosis businesses by means of direct response marketing, which is yeah. the, hey, I've got this pen, who wants to buy it? And that's the hope and pray someone takes the transaction, as opposed to lead generation, which is very hypnotic in nature. Uh, yeah. Like a Dave Elman induction, you're getting that opening wedge, the first phase of the Elman induction, relax the eyelids so they won't work. How is it that I can pique your curiosity? How is it as we start to build the system of how I can ethically sell the right product to the right person yeah. at the highest appropriate rate is where we go within this. So to go through that client journey and redefine the marketing strategies, it's where rather than give you a specific list of we're going to talk Facebook marketing, we're going to talk uh, networking instead, we're going to look at the actual structure of the psychology of the sales process, yeah, which by the way is presented to you entirely in hypnotic language terms. It's all the same concepts. Yeah. As I've become more effective at running my business, I've become more effective at helping my clients. So yes, we will talk Facebook. Yes, we will talk going out and giving presentations. However, the benefit of not looking at it as these individual magical platforms, but instead to understand the true strategy that's inside of it, it's where this is information that 10 years from now, whatever the next big thing is, the content you're going to learn is going to work there. So how do we build those raving fans? How do we build, well, we've got a bunch of people watching us here. How do we build that community within our clients where now we are that obvious expert? We are that person that clearly, that's the one you go to, which when you work from that principle, when you learn how to do that the right way, it doesn't matter that this one up the road is charging a little bit less than you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter that this one is offering a coupon on some website because you are positioning yourself as that authority. So again, it's where inside of this, yes, we'll talk about some of those specific platforms to grow the business, yet it comes back to what are those easy to master mechanisms that most of them are no cost to low cost, that yeah. before you spend any advertising dollars, here's the journey you've got to build to absolutely guide them there. And I'm seeing Wayne in the room totally agree. It's about working smarter and not harder, yeah. which I, I'd, I'd give you the favorite uh, discovery that people often make from what I share with them, that they've been thinking in terms of, oh, I need to throw more people at my website. I need some search engine optimization. Yeah. And uh, they're pointing people at a website that's not working. Yes. I'm going to physically walk you through in a very low-tech adventure 
what has to be there on the website to motivate people to take action? How is it you craft our hypnotic language patterns into that communication remotely where you get to meet me before you even sign up for the services? Yeah. When we build in that format, this is that whole work smart principle where we're guiding people along that journey. And I'll, I'll give you the end of it as my lifestyle often is. I'm spending about seven or eight minutes on a phone call with a client and selling a very high dollar program. Yeah. Because I'm just having to swoop in at the end of that dialogue. Everything else has been satisfied at that point. Yeah. So do you, do you find that you're, you work less as well because you're, you know, do you, do you work less, charge high work less? I, um, I am constantly in a game of leveraging and scaling up. So wow. I, I'd share a quick metaphor that I love. Uh, which was that many years ago, uh, Robin Williams did a remake of the movie Flubber, which if you haven't seen his remake, don't. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> Amazing performer, brilliant comedian, incredible actor. Uh, the story ended very sadly, of course, yet skip Flubber. Yet the story goes, the reason he did Flubber was that he needed to get back into clowning. He needed to get back into physical comedy. Because if I have the timeline correctly, this was right before he did the movie Patch Adams. Okay. So he was using one experience to get ready for the next one. So it's where year after year and yay, happy February 2018 here in the States, I'm wrapping up the filing of my taxes this year and once again up a good 25 percent over the year before so yes there are the times where with a family at home i'm scaling things up so i can take the span of time off so i can step away and not do anything but at the same time there comes this willingness to let's say remove that bottom part of your business yep. so you can then add on a step on top of that yeah so i'd give a quick reference here that when i got my start in stage hypnosis uh, I was doing fundraiser programs that maybe at the time might have ended up only paying me about maybe three or four hundred dollars US. Yeah. Which that's now going back about 12 years ago and I don't do those anymore. Yet that was that leverage point to get started, which then built to this, which then built to this, which then built to this, which then built up from there. So it really allows me to use a uh, casino metaphor to play with the house's money. Yeah. To experiment with new projects and play the game of we're we're a hypnotic community that often says hey, that doesn't work. But instead, I want to look at things and say, how do I make that work differently? Yeah. How do I twist that? I, I gave a talk on Facebook marketing in one of the conventions last year, and I legitimately had people uh, walking up to me in the bathroom um, and saying, uh, yeah, Facebook marketing doesn't work. And I'm there going, I'm here teaching exactly what I've done to make it work. And it's not the magic of click this, don't click that. It's the magic of apply the right strategy, apply the right thinking, which again, whatever it is, whether you're face-to-face -face networking, whether you're putting out information online, mm -hmm. these same principles we're going to apply to your hypnotic technique to apply greater conviction, greater hypnotic phenomenon, but at the same time, apply them to your business. So we're hitting one part business, one part strategy inside of this. So who's this, who, who are you aiming this course at? Because obviously we had a brief discussion prior to on air, and we're not going to bring up certain platforms because we understand them, but they do confuse people. <laughs> well, what level are we looking at here? Are we looking at beginner, intermediate, those that are just starting out in the profession, or those that have been that season? Or is it for everybody? Yeah, well, first of all, I've got to throw up the uh, shout from Kaz here saying, hi, guys. Kaz was the podcast guest uh, last week, uh, so check that one out, or at least that's the one that's currently up, though. That's episode 151 that's still playing. There's two different sides of the audience here. Uh, so on one side of things, which we just added this, by the way, to the website that's on the screen, worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash UK. For those of you that are brand new to hypnosis, the opportunity is to not have to reinvent the wheel that uh, to say it politely, there's a lot of stupid stuff I did in the early days. Uh, didn't work. I'm, not Edison, <laughs> I'm not Edison's light bulbs, mate. There's 50,000 mistakes applied, applied behind me. There's only one that bloody works. You know, yeah. It's yeah. And, and it's to have that benefit of here's someone who's done a lot of the mistakes for you where um, a lot of things that went into debt and paid it off along the way, but to start with that learning curve already in motion. So for the person who's brand new to this, 
on one side of things in terms of the strategies inside of your session, what are those elements that really need to be there? What are those client experiences that they need to have? If they're leaving your process by saying, well, I felt relaxed, I guess something happened. You do a lot of physically based work. You do a lot of kinesthetic change strategies. I do similar things as well of moments where in the process, the client is feeling what's going on, which rather than relaxing them for 20 minutes and reading them a script and saying, hope it works, instead getting into the motion of the process. So the people who are brand new to hypnosis on the technique side, building more powerful kinesthetic change, getting that conviction, that foot in the door right away, and on the business side, not having to reinvent the wheel. I know you've got a lot of great trained uh, people over there too, which um, for the person who's already, let's say, seasoned pro or maybe part-time to nudging into full-time or even maybe already working full-time as it is, we all need to think bigger yeah. about what we do. Uh, yeah. The world has become a whole lot smaller. Yes. So to scale up, I mean, this was part of the dialogue earlier that the filter that I'd often live by is, do I want to move things forward or do I want more of the same? Yeah. So I'm in a place right now where because of the strategies that I've built, I'm not actively paying for marketing right now for Virginia hypnosis, my local business. I'm actually, I still do some stage hypnosis and I'm not actively marketing that yet still doing a number of programs. I'm leveraging, as was mentioned before, everything that was already there into that next phase. So the phone can ring nowadays and here's the local newspaper offering a promo on some advertising spot, which that does work. It just matters what you do to make it work. But to look at that nowadays, I can say, well, if I do that ad and people respond to it, which I'm certain given some specific strategies I can plug in there, they will. That gives me more of the same as opposed to thinking bigger. So behind the scenes, as you and I are chatting, uh, there is some market research. There's a specific group that I want to start to give some presentations, some wellness seminars to. And I've targeted exactly what title of what person within this organization needs to have this message. And uh, while you and I are chatting, I have someone else doing the market research, finding those specific contacts, sending those emails. And I'm looking in the bottom corner of my screen. I'm already getting some email responses from that uh, opportunity, which that I, I don't know how to do that myself in an automated way. So I, you did some outsourcing and someone else is doing that for me. So that's that kind of motivational thinking that for the person who's already working at this full time, do you want more of the same or do you want to build year after year? And again, that whole 80, 20 principle of we get 80% of the results from 20% of what we do. Let's expand that outwards. You should always be working to remove that bottom 20% yeah. in every year and yeah. scale up what you do afterwards as well. I found, and it's just, it's interesting to see that, you know, I started in the back end of a coffee shop in, in Essex, which is in the UK, started in a small coffee shop, and then I invested, and then I invested in, in websites, and I invested in uh, getting people to do my little videos for me, and then I invested in, and it's constantly investing, and then what you find is, is that a lot of people are scared, and I know sometimes this is a taboo word, but I did learn this off of uh, Marshall Silver, it's mm -hmm. not how much something costs me, it's how much is it going to make me. Right, yeah. That's the way that I sit there and look at things now. And it, yes, it may be an act, it may be a cost to go do this. <laughs> how much is that going to cost? How much I, I'm laughing because I made a beautiful mistake earlier today, which by the time it was resolved, no one would have known unless I talked about it now. Um, and it's a little silly mistake that at the end of the day cost me eight dollars. But OK, lesson was learned. Do I want the micro investment to be the focus or the macro learning? to be the experience if I wouldn't want to sound noble about this, but really, no, I screwed up. I sent something out with the wrong email address, with the wrong website. Oh. And I used hypnotic rather than hypnosis. Oh. And in less than two minutes time, we bought the other website address and just pointed it at the right one. <laughs> Good thinking, Batman. Which comes back to if you ever send uh, email marketing, send it to yourself first and make sure the links are correct, yeah, I which I usually do. This morning I didn't. I've done that before. <laughs> People have sent me, I've used, uh, obviously, that ma the mailing system that we utilize in the background. I've sent that before, and somebody said, there's a badge missing. It's, it's, it's always worthwhile just to preview and check, and, and, and always check your work as well. Good mathematician checks their work. Yeah. <laughs> so, this one through. So, uh, what were the dates again that you're coming over? 
Yeah, and the website is here on the screen. It's uh, over at worksmarthypnosis.com uh, forward slash UK. Actually, if you point down, you'll see it. There you are. Uh, it's just that where it is for me, it's just there. Okay. So, it's yeah, the, so uh, the time zone, I think. That's what's <laughs> <laughs> the dates are it's Saturday and Sunday, June 9th and 10th. Yep. Uh, they're full days. We're at the Premier Inn, London Heathrow Airport. Uh, and uh, the event actually right now has an early admi early uh, admission discount on it. Right now, it's just 325 pounds for the two days training. As a bonus, a lot of the information I'm going to be supplementing for you uh, by way of a digital access library. So it's not just the two days in the room and the manual that you're going to get. Uh, after the course, you're going to get private access to a membership community with specific with some specific resources that are going to supplement your learning as well. Yeah, beautiful. Brilliant. So um, so for those people that are interested in joining us, have a look at that link now. Obviously, me and Jason aren't into this heavy, hard, push, push, push type stuff. We don't need to. Um, the reason, and most people that know me on this channel or are watching it later, you know that I bring over the best of what they do. And genuinely, I've been watching Jason for a few years now. And I'll tell you now, he, he knows how to do this stuff. I learn from Jason. Those people that, you know, there's a lot of therapists that contact me and there's a lot of people I'm seeing at the moment on here as well that contact me and say, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? It's by going and learning. A lot of people go out and they want to keep doing course after course after course on therapy. And I've said it before and I know it upsets people. I put this into perspective. I'm a business person first, a therapist second. That's why I feel I'm successful in what I'm doing because I, I implement strategies. I think about what I'm doing and then, and then I implement strategies over a four week period or a six month period on what I'm doing. And I think if you haven't done a business course yet or you haven't done one for a while, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend. I'm going to be there with Jason and I strongly recommend you do it. And there's nothing. It's not about sales or anything like that. You need to do look at your business and you need to look at the implementation and the strategies around it. And that's why I do what I do. That's why I get to jump on a jumbo jet. I'm going to go off to Las Vegas or LA or go over to Washington and go do jobs there because that's what it worked out straight. Hey, I'm on a plane in about uh, four days out to San Diego for a marketing convention. Oh, uh, really? The amazing thing is to be at those events, which I go to those because I enjoy those. I love them and you don't have to. Um, no. But to be there and listen through the dialogue, I mean, uh, here is an event I was at recently, and they're suddenly bringing in the the brain chemistry of how people make decisions, That's where right. this is such a key thing that you hear of people saying, put an opt-in offer on your website, which yes, but what you're looking for in that moment, here's a little preview of it, is it's not just about giving something away. It's not just giving some experience away. It's about going after some specific small win that you want them to get that dopamine release that yes something is working. And if this is the person who can help me with this, I'll actually, I'll give you the behind the scenes on something I'm currently testing right now. Um, it's kind of a behind the scenes thing at the moment that I've only sent to a few people that have contacted me, but were not yet ready to book, but then I sent them something. I made a quick video of me doing a quick uh, collapsing anchors process. Focus on that craving and now harness it and now connect to something positive. Now fire them both off. And rather than visualize yourself, live through the experience where there you are deciding something better to do. Clearly, I'm sending this out to a stop smoking client. Yeah. And I'm looking for the smallest of a win. And the specific phrase I think I used in the uh, what we call call to action at the end of it was that I don't want you to call me until you have used this specific strategy to eliminate just one cigarette from your life. Because at that point, you're going to see that this is working and you have the capability to change. Then call me, we'll knock out the rest together. Yeah. But once again, I don't want you to call me until you've eradicated just one cigarette. Once you've done that, then let's have a conversation and knock out the rest. Which again, this is applying hypnotic principles to what am I doing there? I'm future pacing the change. This is where a couple of weeks ago when you and I were strategizing in terms of opening it up to the community, You've got to go, do we do a hypnosis training? Do we do just a business training? And my approach is that we hit them both at the same time because it's the same principles, the same mechanisms that I'd use to, you know, hypnotic phenomenon, moments like making the client's arms stiff and rigid. Many people would go, oh, that's just a hypno stunt. Why would you do that? Well, you need to motivate every part of the process. If I have part of your mind linking the reason that arm is locked to the release of it, 
connected to your issue. Now I've got motivation towards that moment of phenomenon and it's going to be even stronger. And also by applying what I have called my supercharged principles, I am going for the phenomenon and I'm confirming that I've got it before I ever say, try to bend your arm. So these are strategies that many people would go, well, I don't use those because what do you do if you don't work? Well, I'm getting into the place where I know it's working already and only then saying, try to bend your arm. The same way that I am only in a phone consultation in about seven or eight minutes time, only ever going to go to the point of saying, well, the investment for the process is this. I'm only going to say that when I know you're already sold. So it's the same on both sides of the coin in terms of how we put it all together. So one part strategy, one part business. You're right, though, that we could be chasing. Yes, I will give a certificate with this course, <laughs> the work smart principles. But rather than chasing the paper, the next training, the next event, I need these letters after my name. Yep. It's that opportunity to be able to spread your message to that community and get more people coming in. That's what builds that strength. That's what builds that confidence. And uh, Bev, uh, looking forward to the training in June. Looking forward to seeing you there too as well. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, and I think it's very key. It's probably good to see Bev down there. Um, the, um, I know Bev well. Uh, you know, it's very key that a lot of people that see people that are successful, they don't see the hard work that goes on in the background. Not necessarily, well, it's hard work. Um, you know, keeping things going like we are now. We're both talking in our private time to talk to people and tell them what we're going to be doing and stuff. I think the business element is the biggest thing that therapists fall over on because once you've learned the fundamental basics of hypnosis, of counseling, of CBT or whatever your discipline is, if you can't sell it, if you, if you, if you, you know, you can have the best products in the world, but if you don't tell anyone, you're knackered. You're not going to go anywhere with it. And that's the key. Yeah. Part of that. And this is part of what really clicked for me a few years ago, which was that, too many people, and it's not just hypnotists, really, it's anybody who's in a, in a helping community. I'd give a quick little historical note that um, I have an online program called Hypnotic Business Systems, um, which when it first launched, it was called Hypnosis Business Bootcamp. And I retitled it because I could not sell hypnotic Hypnosis Business Bootcamp to an acupuncturist. I couldn't sell that to a massage therapist, to a personal trainer, to a, uh, acu I couldn't sell that anywhere else. But when I changed the name to Hypnotic Business Systems, now there are physical therapists inside of that community. There are acupuncturists who are in little shift in the branding uh, established that. It's not just our little community of hypnotists. It's anybody in a helping profession. That's something about that we put that business somewhere off to the side as being Either that's a bad thing or that's got to be hard or that's got to be difficult. And it's where I found that something clicked when suddenly we can talk about it in our common shared language. Mm -hmm. Let's apply. Here's why this induction is working. Here's the basic formula behind every hypnotic suggestion, every hypnotic induction. Um, I, I'm amused when someone goes, um, oh, I've invented 58 inductions. And I'm like, <laughs> they're all the same one. <laughs> You know, in a moment, this is going to happen. You're building expectation. You're transitioning into the state. There's different choreography in terms of how to get there. Yet it's all the basic same principle. Every hypnotic suggestion often comes down to a simple cause and effect relationship. As you're listening to my voice, it carries you even deeper because this thing is happening. That's what begins to happen. And as we take the principles of refining, why is the hypnotic strategy working? Why is this actually guiding the person from it begins as compliance and transitions into suggestibility. As they're going through that journey, it's a similar journey to I'm curious about the service to here's my credit card. Yeah. So when it's all applied in this format using our shared vernacular, our shared language, yeah. it becomes a whole lot more approachable and suddenly it becomes fun. Yeah. Where it's it's a game. I mean, um, there's a moment a couple of years ago where Michelle, my wife, goes, you don't play video games. Thank you. <laughs> and I, which we have a lot of friends who are just obsessed with video games, which not to knock that, but this is my video game. Yeah. I, and that's the thing as well is that I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm a bit like yourself because the, the gig that's in San Diego, I really considered going to that. And, um, and it was a case of I'm now finding myself more and more intrigued in the psychology behind it, why we do what we do. And I'm finding myself looking at the strategies behind the scene like yourself. And it's interesting that you, to note what you said a minute ago, because it is about that when you are 
projecting yourself and you are selling things, you are doing things, even when you are giving away things for free, you know, it's the appreciation value and everything. So well, it's not just the appreciation. It's about going for that small win. What's going to be the result? You know, where do you want them after that and to ride that energy and then go, well, here's what we can do even better. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all good. Because I, I do find that some therapists find that making money is a bit of a dirty word. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone watching this, but they do find it. If, you know, if you are making a little bit of coin and I'm not being greedy, I, I, I never am, you know, in the way that I do things is a lot of people do get wound up that you have to make you, that you are making money. And I'm very quick to come in and say, well, you know, a big smile won't put um, food on the table. And this is my only career. This is the only thing that I do. Hypnosis is the only thing I do. And the thing is, is it, it's not, it's an exchange of energy. That's the way I look at it. And by, you know, by developing your business skills, you can exchange more energy with a lot more people and, and have more fun with it. That's the and way also I also have that ability to reinvest back into yourself that, I mean, I'm attending several trainings this year. I, um, have kind of developed the reputation that at some conventions I've, yep, I'll, part of why we're there Saturday and Sunday. Uh, <laughs> there's experiences where I'll, you know, I'll pay for that vendor room table at the convention. Yep. And um, I'm not there a lot. Yeah. No, no, hey, no. Here's this workshop I want to go to. Here's this thing, which let me, let me throw in a little thought here, which um, I've never really talked about this. I don't think in any platform before. Maybe I need to do a podcast session on this at some point. There's a specific intention that often I'm looking for when I'm choosing what type of training that I go to. So yes, we want to go for the specific uh, concepts, the specific techniques that someone is doing. You have to look at what is the almost thematic nature, the theme of what's going on. How is it this person is able to craft this journey where a person is curious and now here's the result? You know, so we begin with that state of curiosity, but then it transitions somewhere interesting. So it's where, yes, I'm there at a training sometimes to go, I want to see how they handle this specific type of client. Yeah. Yet it's that amazing research that points to like in the psychological world, they couldn't track and say, oh, cognitive behavioral is more effective than Freudian is more effective than acceptance and commitment. It came down to the client relationship. It came down to the rapport in the room, at which point from an evolutionary standpoint, all these techniques that we're all aware of, all this stuff works, you just have to use it properly. So we can be chasing that new shiny thing, yet I'd encourage you to either really just simply to chunk up, you know, what's above this? What's going on inside of this process that's now making these individual strategies work? Yeah. So it's where, of course, with a family at home and um, wanting to spend a lot of time with them, I'm very specific about what I go to, what I involve myself in, yet I'm really motivated by going, what else is going on here? What is that bigger picture theme that's inside of this that's really making this whole system work? That's what I want to learn. Yeah, that it, it is so intriguing, I'll tell you. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been doing this in the background for about a year and a half. I've really been into it for the past 18 months, but now digital marketer seems to be like, flying around i'm in mean, it all the time i'm learning there's 10 year olds on youtube teach me stuff every day <laughs> so there's something you don't know how to do a teenager has put a video on youtube explaining it <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. Yes. It's like that. Dink, thanks very much the last time i made this trip to san diego i had a uh, seven hour layover thanks to snow and i learned how to solve a rubik's cube thanks to youtube oh pull the stickers off the voice of the person had to have been 12 years old but now i can do it it's, it's seven <laughs> replicatable steps <laughs> and uh, yeah karen thank you she says love listening to this great work she previously said this is what i struggle with we were talking about the business side though that's that's our community that's really anybody in a helping profession take the same dialogue and um a client i've been working with recently uh here in the states there's a lot of therapists uh psychotherapists psychologists that are moving away from the insurance model into direct billing, sort of more similar to what we do as hypnotists. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a great insurance system. You may have heard about that over here. Um, <laughs> stop laughing, it hurts so much. Uh, but to look at it in terms of, you know, she's in the office and th there's an amazing quote that if everything in life came down to knowing the right strategies, we would all be billionaire CEOs with six pack abs. Yeah. Which the man who said that is a billionaire and is in incredible physical shape, so. Screw that guy. Uh, no, but it comes down to it's not just the strategies. It's not like I go back to the scene like in the movie uh, Dustin Hoffman and uh, The Graduate just to say, oh, here's the future, plastics. 
yeah. you know, just to say, oh, you need to be doing Facebook. Oh, you need to be doing text message marketing. Oh, you need to be, it's not the platform, it's the strategy. Yeah. And when we get those strategies in the right place, the same as when we take the techniques we know as the hypnotist and put the right techniques in the right order, that's where the change process takes shape. The same as if we can put ourselves into that perceptual position of our client who is stuck inside of a problem and there's something that they want to resolve, there are some uh, state chaining. There are specific states they have to move through yeah. to make that decision. And to become that uh, wizard behind the curtain who knows how to craft that experience and the different ways to deliver it, where I could sit here and say, I'm really good at this. Yet moments where I'm, here's a blatantly honest moment. I'm getting a video testimonial from a client the other day. And uh, the experience was, um, I was simply going, oh, and what about this? And I was giving a prompt. Why? Because that's a specific thing that I need someone else saying about my services. That I can shoot a video of me talking head saying, oh, and here's a cool thing you should know, yeah. which that smacks of a sales pitch. But now she says it. Yeah. The same as if you rewind part of my stage hypnosis career, when that was the start of what I did, uh, the promo video that I was sending out, it was mostly a high school principal talking about how appropriate the program is for schools. Job was done. Boom, the, the demo DVD was a courtesy at that point. The contract, the pricing was a courtesy. Positioning on his level was where the process began. How do we think in those terms and guide through that journey? That's what we're going to be doing together. Beautiful. So give us a recap, mate. So for those people that want to just join us, hello, Jacqueline, how are you? Um, what I would say is, is that well, this is we, we've been discussing some things that you will be able to pick up from and you'll understand who Jason is for those people that just joined us. But just tell us the dates again. Um, and uh, what, what's happening, where we are. Yeah, Work Smart Hypnosis, live in London. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday, June 9th and 10th, uh, just outside of Heathrow Airport. All the details over at worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash UK. I see uh, Leon Phillips in the Netherlands just signed up. Hey, Leon, welcome, join us. Uh, it's a two-day event. It's one part hypnotic business strategy and one part hypnotic chain strategy. And it all comes together as we do this event where the same principles are going to be applying to both. Building greater moments of hypnotic phenomenon and conviction inside of your process in the same mechanisms applied over to the business in terms of guiding that strategy in terms of what has to happen in the decision strategies, what has to be the thinking to guide the journey moving forward. So it's going to address making you more effective in your process with your clients and more effective in your business as well. And again, details over at worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash UK. There's an early admission discounted rate of 325 pounds. Uh, plus you get some nice bonuses. There's a manual, there's a digital access library that you're gonna get afterwards with several hours of training content to continue the training long after the event. And again, that website's here on the screen. We'll look forward to having you there. Guys, it's like I said at the very moment, at the very beginning as well. Jason is a very good friend of ours, and, um, and I do enjoy a, a very good, uh, um, enjoyable evening at the Alligator Bar in Las Vegas when we meet up. But the thing is, is that yeah, I'm telling you now, Jason knows what he's on about. Um, I don't get anything from this. I'm just we're bringing Jason over to host him. It's going to be an amazing experience. And like I said a minute ago, it's not how much it costs you; it's how much is it going to make you. And I and I personally can vouch that what if you implement, if you implement. What Jason tells you, you will make that back. And I'll tell you that now. I told all my trainers this, and they're all doing the same. It's about the investment. It's about the right investment and not going looking for the golden fleece, uh, you know, in courses, because it's not going to work. Uh, you, you know, it's the business element you need to adapt. So, so the trade off is as the business is growing and sustaining and profiting even greater, then it's even easier to take that step away and go, here's this little thing I want to finesse. Here's this little nuance that I want to get better at, yeah. where I will very easily shut my business down for a week because, hey, here's this convention that I want to go to. Here's this class that I want to attend. And it's not the game of, oh, what will I do when things are not happening? And I'm I'm a solo entrepreneur these days. I've got a big uh, training center, yet it was more profitable me, for me to turn the extra practitioner room into a production studio. Yeah, That's what I use it for. Again, that's scaling up mentality. I saw your green screen last time we chatted. <laughs> uh, I'm about to... The only, reason, well. the only reason I've moved is because the Wi-Fi is here and I've, I've had a breakdown. But not. But you're absolutely right. I changed my therapy room 
into a studio. You know, that type of mentality, you know, and, and just doing my own stuff and, and bringing it all in. But they're the similar things that we're doing as well. But, guys, uh, I strongly, <laughs> strongly recommend it. I really do. Jason's over. When was the last time in the UK? Uh, when, uh, let's see, it was 1990, and uh, I was there when I was eight years old for New Year's. Oh, mate. So, <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, Jason, we're bringing Jason over. Come over, come see Jason, meet Jason. It's been a while. Have a look at the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast as well. You'll see Jason on there. There's lots and lots of stuff on there. You know, even if you don't make a decision tonight to join us in London uh, at Heathrow um, Airport, then have a look at Jason's stuff. But like I just said, invest in the business element, not your next fan dangle Google course, okay? Um, and it, I'm, I'm we're just, the one that's going to give you both, which is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then, guys. So, Jason, have you got anything else to say just before we wrap it up? Uh, no. Check out, of course, the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast. There's all sorts of conversations on there. The session coming out uh, tomorrow on Thursday is all about hypnotic outsourcing strategies. So how do you take your business and share the responsibility so you can spend the time doing the stuff that you're passionate about and scale up from there? I've just, I've just realized something as well while I've been here, right? Is it yeah. Kevin, if you watch this later on, you owe me money. I've just realized right. Just... <laughs> and Charlene's certificates in the background. What, what type of product? What, what, how much am I earning out of this? That's what I want to know. So here's the fun part. This big image I've got behind me, the big uh, wooded scene. Uh, Scott Sandlin has that in his office. James Hazelrig has that in their office. So it turns out if you want to be a good hypnotist, you need to shop at Ikea. <laughs> right. I'm going looking for it. I'm going to go. For that now, <laughs> step up your game, Carl. Come on, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> guys, it's been a pl- Jason, it's been a pleasure as ever. You know, we can probably do another one prior to coming over. Let's have let's get you on again. Let's chat some more. Let's talk about what's been going on and how, how we're doing stuff. But, guys, the, the links there, I think we've told you enough. So, we've told you enough, enough as it is. Um, get him on an affiliation fit, yeah, I, I do. Kevin, Kevin does. I knew I need to get him on. He's tight. <laughs> <laughs> And, give me- uh, thanks, Anna, who just said, excellent. I've seen all sorts of uh, comments. Karen, thanks for uh, love listening to this. Great work. Uh, Kim, love it. Bev, great points. And uh, again, we got to go back to the one we started with. Chris oh, Thompson, okay. Shano, you're in inner melt. And I'll see him next week, actually. Oh, we love it. We love yeah. it. <laughs> Is it, guys? Thanks very, very much for joining us this evening. If you've got any questions and you want to talk to Jason directly, contact him via the website there as well. You can talk to him, you know, directly. Or he's on Facebook as well. You can have a quick chinwag with him, and then we can go from there. But I really do hope that you, um, that you do take the time to come visit us in Heathrow. Um, come meet Jason and come learn how he's turned you know, Virginia hypnosis into an international brand into doing what he's doing. So it's great. Jason, once again, thanks again, my friend. And um, guys, um, thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you on the next live. Take care for now, guys. All All right. We'll see you all. Have a good one. Make it rain.